Tell her you are dumb. How do we know that it's legend and you have no idea, but at the same time you're willing to kiss this stranger as you're blindfolded? I'm gonna say something. You're gonna crucify me for it. Hello, welcome back. I'm in a new recording area. We moved again. Hunter and I have been married for three years and this is our fourth apartment. Awesome. In case you missed it, I also made a book jar and it's so cute and you should definitely watch that video because it was fun. This book. Literally, I wasn't gonna read it. First of all, I heard it wasn't that great and even my sister told me it was stupid. I went ahead and read it anyways because just because straight up the illustrations were so gorgeous and I had to just check this book out from the library and read it myself and create my own opinion. Stephanie Garber, don't come for me. I'm sorry for everything I'm gonna say, so click away. She's a talented writer and I loved Once Upon a Broken Heart, The Ballad of Never After, and then A Curse for True Love, of course, you know how I feel about that one. Not great. That one was such a huge disappointment. I love when people stay within the same universe, when they have branch off stories, except when they're crappy like this. You had a whole year, a whole year, to write us a good story post finale about Tella and Legend. I wasn't expecting a huge plot because this is a novella, but what was that? So the premise of the story is we have Tella who tells her sister Scarlett, please, please, please postpone the holiday, which is basically Christmas in Valenda. And Scarlett's like, why? And Tella's like, because I don't know what to give legend. <laughs> first of all, my first complaint is this was not Tella to me. Tella is supposed to be a strong, unpredictable. She's kind of the exact opposite of Scarlett in a lot of ways, which I hate when authors write a vlog novella, things like this, and then their character kind of loses all the development or characteristics that we love and care for. And this is exactly what Tella was. I was like, who are you, Tella? You're a pushover, you're freaking out, you think you don't deserve legend. You know that legend loves you. We know this, we've been over this, the last series proved it to us, stop. That was really frustrating. Everything about this book physically is beautiful. The way it's set up, just these little things, the only colored ink they had was red. These are our people. And this is perfectly describing why I'm frustrated. Look at Tella. This was her, the entire novel, nervous, freaking out, lost all confidence, and she had an identity crisis. But the reason she's freaking out about finding Legend a perfect gift is because she feels like he doesn't love her anymore. And she's afraid that she's going to lose him and she's afraid to even lean over and kiss him even though they are in love because she's self-conscious, which is so unlike them together and so unlike her. Who's this girl who was in the woods with Dante and he was just crying to kiss her and she was like, nope, bye. Where'd she go? I don't like seeing that flipped. Their relationship dynamic just seemed weird and off and I didn't like that. And I even heard some complaints that this novella was supposed to be a holiday and there was actually hardly anything Christmassy about it other than the illustrations and the gift giving. I mean, the illustrations were gorgeous and I think everyone can agree. I'm gonna say something you're gonna crucify me for it. I am not a huge fan of Julian and Scarlett because I'm not a Caraval lover. The first book was so boring to me and the romantic buy-in was just kind of stupid and frustrating. Meh. Most of you won't agree. Even Stephanie Garber herself says that Julian and Scarlett are her, her favorite. They're her babies, which I totally get. But I just, I will never read Carval. I don't like that book. I don't care for them. Scarlett is frustrating. And the first book is kind of confusing. I don't know if you guys can agree with that. Go and read it again, I promise you. Like, try to explain to me everything that happened. You won't understand it, because it's confusing. Let's talk about pages 80. This is when Tella, you are dumb. Why does she eat the candy from that stranger? She's, <laughs> she's, she's dumb. I know Tella is a strong person. I didn't feel strength from her when she said, no, I don't want guards. No, I'm gonna eat this candy to have it lead it me to my true love. Then she got drugged. No, it wasn't strength to me. What I was sensing was, Tella, you are just being stupid. Cause she just seemed like a completely different character. She seemed self-conscious. Also, can we just admit though, Scarlett's such a baddie in this. Tella's supposed to be the baddie. That's what I feel. Here we have it to where she goes to find the perfect gift. <laughs> I can't even get it out. Legend is like, I'm super busy. I can't really stay and talk to you. And Tella's just waiting for them to kiss. And she's like, I just have all these expectations he's just gonna kiss me and it's gonna be perfect but no man is just walking around like this which I love but his flirty side gone which I guess it comes back later which I'll tell you it's kind of like you know the 
This book kind of felt like a fan fiction, but not in the good way. It kind of just felt like a retelling of Fifty Shades of Grey holiday edition. <laughs> She's all hurt, you know, he walks away without them kissing, and she had this whole idea. She was gonna stop him, they were gonna kiss, blah 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 blah. This is not the Tella I knew to love. This was the girl who had Jax kiss her, pretty much fall in love with her, and she said, no, never mind. I just have boys chase me, that's what happens. But the real problem was that after she wakes up after being poisoned, Tella freaking stop repeating yourself. The amount of times that she said the same crap over and over again, I felt like Stephanie Garber was trying to read a word count or even relaying information to elementary kids. Stephanie Garber was allowing us to even think anything for ourselves because Tello was thinking it 10 times over for us. Annoying. The amount of times that she says imposter is crazy. She kind of gets kidnapped. Tella, you're the woman in love with him. We are the readers. How do we know that it's legend and you have no idea but at the same time you're willing to kiss this stranger as you're blindfolded? Even though you're not sure that it's legend? Even though she lies about it later and says she knew the whole time but really she didn't know until the note at the end? Stop. Tell me why you wouldn't recognize your boyfriend's voice. This man has been talking to you in his dark, low, sensual voice and you don't even recognize it even though you're like, oh, I'm super attracted to it. Unbelievable. The character believability was... Zero stars out of five. But you know, she's also the lack of Jax and the lack of Jax and Evangeline. Okay, everyone knows that they're my favorite. Even though the third book screwed me over, I still love Jax and Evangeline. The fact that there was not even a mention, I mean barely a mention, a gingerbread version of Jax here. There's something known as Jax gambling pit, which was nothing, that meant nothing to me. But once she's kidnapped, the man who is like bearded, whatever, I was like, oh, maybe this is him. But then I forgot, oh wait, she would totally recognize him. And then they blindfold her, make her get in this skimpy little dress. Example, the jealousy here, another step of Tella just being a simp for t legend. It should be the other way around, reminder. The whole time, you know, she's not completely aware that it's actually legend, so she's overthinking everything. The perfect gift is me showing who this imposter is to legend. That's gonna be the perfect gift. Tella, that's not even a good gift. He'd rather have you alive. So this, if this is an imposter, get out of there, call for help. It says, why were they all here instead of outside basking in holiday magic? How had the imposter legend lured them in? Question number one. She wanted to figure out who this imposter was. So telling us over and over, what she was trying to do. And it says, again, Teller wondered exactly what this imposter legend was after. So even Stephanie Garber knew that, you know, again, Tello was thinking the same thing. What did he want with all these girls? Was he trying to hurt legend or was he trying to gain something for himself? And then she says later, Tello told herself to smile, to find out who the imposter was. Tello, we know what you're trying to do. Stop telling us every other sentence that you're trying to find out who the imposter is. And please, do you know any other word other than imposter? And then it says it again. I'm not even kidding. It says it word for word again. But what was this imposter doing? What was he after? How long had he been pretending to be legend? Okay, okay, just say it one more time. We're wondering what you're thinking, Tella. Tell us one more time what you're wondering. This is the best. This was it. <laughs> this was not legend, she said. But this imposter felt like someone. Girl, tell me right now why you recognize him but not as your own boyfriend. The imposter's dark voice was no longer silky, but it still held heavy notes of magic. He's magical, he's silky, he's familiar, but it's not legend, right, Tella? Right? She had chosen this. She wanted to meet the imposter legend. It's giving cheating. It's giving cheating, just saying. And then it says she needed to follow through with her original plan. Oh, was she going to tell us her plan again? Yes, she is, right here. She needed to figure out who was behind this and then turn the imposter into legend. She's trying to reach a word count. How many times can she put in her plan in this book, in this novella? I mean, I had low expectations as soon as Tella tried to stop the holiday just for her to find a gift for legend because I just thought that was ridiculous. Tella's in a room by herself and of course legend comes in and we all know that it's legend except Tella, she doesn't know. He's all shh kiss me. Whoa, of course she's blindfolded and gagged. What is this? Not sexy. This wasn't sexy at all. This was weird. I'm married, happily married. I love my husband. If he were to kidnap me and blindfold me and gag me, sorry, I'm not into that.
I also hated his little talking. It was cringy. And some people are saying I was kicking my feet. I loved it so much. Ew, no, I was cringing out the whole time. And he ungagged her and he's like, better? I'm like, stop. She's blindfolded. She's kind of helpless. She's like, eh, there's not much I can do. I need to get to the bottom of this. I'm just going to take a nap. Perfect, Ella. You do that, girlfriend. Like, where is this scheming, smart woman that I've known? He leaves her to just be alone in that room. And then she's like, hey, can I get anything to eat? Can I get a cookie? <laughs> like, some snowflake cookies or hot chocolate? Stephanie Garber was trying to make this a holiday novella so bad that she just had to throw that in there. She's all like, you don't get to call me love. Tella, if you're about to act like that, like actually try to fight him instead of just fall into his lap and kiss him. That was wild to me. She tried to scoot away. That's what a captive would do. But the hand on her leg was warm and soft and possessed him in a way that shouldn't have felt as good as it did. Please. For just a second, Tella decided to give in. With a stranger? With an imposter, you mean? He kissed her the way he'd kidnapped her, wickedly and possessively. Girl, that's a red flag. I don't care that you asked for it at the end of the book. You, he found a you found a letter that you said, please kidnap me, that would be interesting. But I felt weird. He kissed me like legend, but what if this wasn't the real legend? Yeah, Tella, what if it wasn't the real legend? He finds a note that says, ready to play and she has to put on this armor, yada, 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 don't really care. She goes outside, she chooses her weapon. Okay, but he stays far away that she can't really see him, and then she finds a note to where she writes to legend. I know it's not really kid kidnapping if I ask you to steal me away, but I think it would be fun to pretend. Yeah, so she basically asked for a role play. She said, it was him, her legend, the real legend, the only legend. She knew it would be him. Girl, then why did we read a whole book about you not knowing, trying to find out who the imposter was, trying to find out what do you want? Where is Legend? Is he in danger? Oh, I'm gonna find out who this imposter is as a gift for Legend. If you knew the whole time, why are, why did we even read this? She's a liar. <laughs> she says, oh, I should have known. And he said, but I thought you knew all along. And she said, I knew enough. We knew enough, you didn't. So overall, I'm just gonna say what everyone's thinking. Stephanie Garber, she has passion projects like this which I just feel is boring. Like, I know she's a strong writer, but I feel like like some of her books are just hit or miss. Ballad of Never After, amazing. The best book she ever wrote. A Curse for True Love, one of the worst books she ever wrote. I saw someone say this and I'm gonna say it too. I feel like she gets so busy with promoting her books. You know, I was there. I had her story notifications on for A Curse for True Love, so I knew everything, knew every giveaway, knew exactly all the updates, when it would be released, when it got postponed. I was devastated. I know. Someone said if she had just spent more time actually developing the book rather than promoting it, it would have been a lot better. And I have to agree. Stephanie Garber, I'm sorry, but please get, I know what your potential is and this is not it. And some of you are just Carval die hard fans. You're just gonna eat this up and love it anyways. I've seen a lot of the reviews just saying I was kicking my feet. This is like the legend and Tella story that I've wanted that I've been waiting for. I wish there was more Scarlet. Did we actually want this? No, did we need it? No. It just sounded like an extra long epilogue that didn't feel canon because it felt too fan fiction-y. <laughs> hey, make sure to check out my sweatshirts that I've been making and make sure to buy one if you really want one. They're really cute and give me more ideas what I can make more of. I love you all and I'll see you soon. Bye.